The man accused in the Gilgo Beach serial killings is being investigated in the death of another woman. Investigators are looking into Rex Howerman in connection to the death of Carmen Vargas. Vargas's family claims her gruesome death bore too many similarities to the Gilgo forced laying that Howerman is accused of committing. Vargas was 29 years old back in 1989 when her body was discovered. Hillerman was ple has pleaded not guilty to murdering three women whose remains were found along a short stretch of Long Island's Gilgo Beach back in 2010. He is also the prime suspect in the 2007 disappearance and death of a fourth woman. An escaped killer keeps getting caught on security cameras. There's another shot of him. However, it's still not enough to help law enforcement catch him. Overnight, Danilo Calvacante was seen only miles from the prison in Pennsylvania where he escaped. The botanical garden had to be evacuated after the sighting. It was the ninth confirmed sighting since Cavalcante's escape last Thursday. The neighbors in the area say their surprise is taking so long to catch him. Yes, very. Yeah. I mean, even with the FBI in now, the SWAT teams, I just don't get it. Right. I just don't get it. Cavalcante was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of his ex-girlfriend. Her family, who lives in the area, has now had... 24-hour police detail. Authorities saying they're just too terrified to even leave the house. At least six people have died in Greece this week as a result of a storm that brought massive amounts of rain. And flooding is an issue still. Several areas have been cut off due to the flooding. People are resorting to getting up on roofs to wait for help to arrive. Dozens have already been evacuated and at least six people are missing. Outside with live cam, if you were going to a football game tonight and you happen to be on the shady side, you have an advantage because it's going to be warm at kickoff. Oh, it will uh, for any of those games that are going on tonight. And by the way, we talked about this earlier, David. What a weekend for Texas football. All the games are good. Oregon, Texas Tech, a and Miami, Texas, Alabama. Rice and Houston are playing. SMU and Oklahoma. So let it rain Utah tomorrow. <laughs> let it rain. Hey, I think we'd, we'd be Bring okay it on. with that. We'd be okay with that. Let's look at the rain chances, actually, what we have going on tomorrow. There is a 30% chance of some isolated storms, but I say that's mainly tomorrow evening. So we're talking about 5 to 8 p.m. That would be the window. Uh, we do need to watch that because there could be some gusty winds involved there. Sunday, 30% chance of rain. And then next week, 30% chance of rain Wednesday and Thursday. That's associated with that front we've been talking about. So looking a little better. These rain chances aren't super high. This is not a guarantee of rain around the area, and certainly it's not going to be a drop buster, but thankful that they are in the forecast. 105 today. The feels like number could go as high as 106. Be careful out there. This is some serious heat today. And we will be breaking a record. Uh, there's no doubt about it. The record is 101 set back in 1993. That doesn't stand a chance. 102 is the record tomorrow set all the way back in 1893. We're forecasting 104. And Sunday, we could tie the record before we finally start to see the numbers fall off a little bit. And we'll be cooler by the middle part of next week. That's the other bit of good news in that forecast. More on the seven-day forecast coming up in just a few minutes. David. Dustin, thank you. The maker of sleep apnea machines has agreed to pay $479 million to settle claims related to a recall. The law firm handling the class action lawsuit says Philips Respironics has agreed to reimburse the cost of affected devices. There was a recall back in 2021 because some ventilators, CPAPs, BPAP machines could lead to health problems. They contain foam that can break down, possibly causing the user to inhale or swallow particles or chemicals. The FDA says it's received more than 100,000 complaints, including reports of at least 385 deaths. More information about the recall is on the FDA website. The clock is ticking to avert a potential strike of roughly 150,000 auto workers at factories run by big companies like GM and Ford. It comes amid a summer of strikes and threatened strikes. ABC's Jay O'Brien points out the strikes are impacting industries from movie sets to school buses. The auto industry now hurtling towards a potential strike of nearly 150,000 of its workers, with the deadline for a deal less than a week away. The United Auto Workers demanding a 40% pay increase over four years, which may seem steep, but it's the same increase the UAW says the CEOs of the big three U.S. automakers received. They're also asking for a 32-hour work week and a return of traditional pensions. We just want 
to be able to live a, 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 a better standard of life. Automakers Ford, GM, and Stellantis, the maker of Dodge, Chrysler, and Jeep vehicles, calling the union's demands unrealistic. GM recently countering with a 10% pay increase. The union president calling that proposal insulting. When workers get fair and equitable justice and fair and equitable wages and benefits, they move the economy. According to a Michigan economic consulting firm that measures the cost of labor disputes, a 10-day strike could cost the broader U.S. economy more than $5 billion, on top of billions of losses for the automakers. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen telling ABC's senior White House correspondent Selena Wang the president is closely monitoring the situation. President Biden is hopeful that there will be an agreement that's reached. The potential walkout the latest in a summer of strikes from union actors and writers in Hollywood to a tense but avoided UPS labor dispute to a potential looming strike of New York City's school bus drivers as kids return to the classroom. Hopefully it doesn't happen. If it happens, guess what? We're all going to do things. We're going to figure it out. Back to that looming auto worker strike. The deadline for a deal is fast approaching. The current contract expires on midnight, September 15th, next Friday. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. You know, a lot of folks are ready for the NFL season to kick off. Actually started last night, but Sunday's going to be a big weekend. One man already tried to make room in his schedule for all the games. I was attempt to submit a resignation letter to his wife is going viral. And Apple is warning iPhone users to make sure they update their software. It's all due to a security issue. And Apple says hackers know about it and may be exploiting it already. How to make sure that update is installed on your phone. Coming up after the break. Apple urging iPhone and iPad owners to update their operating systems immediately. The company issued an update that fixes a vulnerability that hackers may already be exploiting. It was discovered by the Citizen Lab at University of Toronto. The security flaw exists in iOS 16.6.1. Experts say iPhone and iPad owners should immediately go to settings menu on their devices. From there, select general, then software update. Tap install now to begin the process. We'd like to begin the process of rain. That's what process we care about right now. And maybe, just maybe, tomorrow while we're watching football, we might have a little shower or two hanging around. There's a chance, David, I think tomorrow evening of a couple of thunderstorms popping up and nice. we'll take it. I mean, look, we, we need the rain so desperately. 94 is the high so far today, but this number is gonna jump up very quickly. The record is 101. We're going to shatter that today. That was set back in 1993. Uh, in fact, I think we could get up to 105 today. Latest on the heat, the rain chances, and Hurricane Lee coming up. Now we have some late breaking news for you from the Justice Center. After two and a half hours of deliberations, a jury has reached a verdict in that murder trial we told you about at the top of the show. Guy and Perez was found not guilty of both murder and manslaughter. He was on trial accused of fatally shooting 39 year old Luis Rosales back in the August of 2022. Rosales was his mother's boyfriend. Guy and Perez's defense was that he killed Luis Rosales because he was protecting a close family member. The state argued this case isn't about that. They wanted the jury to hold him accountable for taking Perez's life, even if Perez has his reasons. Once again, the jury has returned a not guilty verdict on all charges. We'll have, of course, much more for you on our website, KSAT.com, and much more on our afternoon newscast, KSAT, 12, or KSAT News at 5 for you. In the meantime, we are looking forward to this weekend for more than one reason. Rain being, I don't know if rain or football is the top reason we're looking forward to this weekend. Which one, which one would well, it be? We find out what the scores are first, and then, <laughs> then I'll get back to you. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it, there is some rain uh, in the forecast, although it's not a guarantee. It's, it's a 30% chance both Saturday and Sunday, but uh, we do want to let you know that that is a possibility. Uh, we do also have a big, big storm out in the tropics. That is Hurricane Lee. First, though, need to address Margo. It formed last night, tropical storm. This is not going to be a problem. Stays out of our open water. It'll weaken after time. It may become a category one storm, but uh, it's nothing like Lee. 
Lee is uh, pretty incredible. It was Category 5 earlier. Uh, it has weakened just a little bit. Winds are at 155. You can see it's a little more ragged. Yesterday, it was almost a perfect circle, and that's when you know this is a really strong storm. Nonetheless, winds are at 155 miles per hour. Nothing to sneeze at, gusting to 190. And this is moving west-northwest at about 13 miles per hour. It will continue that trek likely seeing a major hurricane as it moves north of the Dominican Republic winds still on Wednesday at 130 miles per hour. Uh, it appeared that this could get close to one of the strongest storms we've ever seen in the Atlantic, but uh, we do know that it's uh, likely going to take a turn. Now, there are still some models that get close, close to New England, and certainly if you're up here in Canada, you're going to want to pay close attention as the storm will race north. Uh, as we get into next week on the Saffir Simpson scale again uh, for it to be a category five, it's got to have a winds of 157 or more. That's where it was this morning. Not quite there this afternoon. And speaking of the strongest winds, if you were curious, strongest hurricanes we've seen in the Atlantic Basin, Lee's going to get close. Not quite there uh, with some of these storms, but and you remember Dorian, that was just a few years ago, crossed over the Bahamas, winds 185 miles per hour sustained by that storm. Uh, the, the, the strongest was Allen way back in the 80s, Category 5 storm. Now, Allen did actually hit South Texas, but not with that strength. It had weakened significantly by the time it got here. Most of these storms did uh, weaken before they hit land, except for the Labor Day weekend uh, hurricane, which uh, hit in uh, 1935 there in Florida. And that did a lot of damage. But anyway, those are the strongest storms we've seen in the Atlantic. And again, Lee may rival some of those. 94 right now, clear skies, southerly winds at about 3 miles per hour. Heat index is at 99. Dew point trend today, like we've seen in previous days, the dew points will fall off in the afternoon. It'll be more of a dry heat. I still think there's probably enough there to get a little bit of a heat index, especially over the next couple of hours uh, before we get into the evening hours when it'll feel very dry. But it will also feel very hot. 108 in Austin, 105 in San Antonio. These are the highest today. 110 in Wichita Falls, 107 in Dallas. I mean, this is big time heat. And tomorrow is going to be pretty close to this. So another crazy stretch here of some uh, very, very hot temperatures. Here's a look at the forecast for tomorrow. Now, again, no rain today, but tomorrow afternoon, 4 o'clock, we could start to see a few storms develop. And then some of those storms can make a run for San Antonio. Don't pay too close attention to the exact location where this model is placing storms because I think it's going to depend on outflow boundaries, kind of where they set up on, as to where these storms develop. But I think the idea is there, and a 30% chance of rain I think is warranted tomorrow afternoon. And if we do get uh, any of these storms to develop or a storm to develop, there could be some gusty winds involved, just looking at the profile of the atmosphere. So that's just something we need to watch out for tomorrow. And I think again on Sunday, uh, we can see a similar setup where we get some isolated showers and storms along a wheat frontal boundary. So that's uh, kind of the, the rain chance in the near term. As we look long term, we're going to watch this front. So Monday is a pretty quiet day. Most of Tuesday pretty quiet. But as this slides down Tuesday night into Wednesday, our rain chances come back up a little bit. And the good news with this front, while it's not terribly strong, it will cool us down a little bit. And that uh, you'll see that uh, take hold Wednesday and Thursday. So here's a look at the extended forecast. 104 tomorrow, still very hot. 101 Sunday, 99 Monday, 98 Tuesday. And you see the rain chances uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Right now, 30%. And temperatures drop back into the mid-90s. Cooler and rain. What a wonderful combination. That's what we need. Thanks, Justin. Yep. Hey, the NFL season is here. One husband getting noticed because he gave his wife a notice. How she responded after receiving a resignation letter from him. And the U.S. Open is winding down with only a few players left in the tournament who's still set to face off in the finals and the semifinals. Coming up. Oh, was a thrilling night at U.S. Open in the women's semifinal. Coco Golf dominated to win her way to the final, while Madison Keys fell just a little short of an All-American final. NBC's Will Reed has a look at the highlights. Plus, what's coming up next in the tournament? It's out, and that's it. Arena Sabalenka completes a huge comeback. In the early hours this morning at Arthur Ashe Stadium, hopes of an All-American women's final dashed. Very Disappointing for Madison Keys, who was so close several times. 
Madison Keys battling world number one Arna Sabalenka through an epic three-setter. Madison Keys comes out blazing. After cruising to a six-love first set win, Keys losing each of the next two sets in a tie break. Overall, I actually thought it was a really good match and pretty high level. Uh, just unfortunately on the losing end. Sabalenka will be facing off in the finals against... First U.S. Open final of her career. American darling Coco Gauff, who overcame not just her crafty opponent, Karolina Mukova. 40-shot rally, longest rally, saving their best tennis for last. But a bizarre and potentially crushing match delay in the beginning of the second set. It lasted nearly an hour, caused by climate protesters in the far reaches of the stands. It can totally ruin your concentration. One even gluing his feet to the stadium floor. The USTA releasing a statement saying three of the four protesters were escorted out of the stadium without further incident. The fourth protester affixed their bare feet to the floor of the seating bowl. Due to the nature of this action, NYPD and medical personnel were needed. Goff seemingly unfazed by the commotion. I, like, I feel like something's going to happen this weekend because they did it at French Open, they did it at Wimbledon, so I was like, nothing happened sure. at US Open yet, so I was like, well, I mean, maybe <laughs> the trend will continue, so that's what I was thinking about. Coco Goff becomes the youngest US woman to reach the US Open final since a 17-year-old Serena Williams did it back in 1999. Now, will an American man also reach the men's final? We'll get the answer to that question later today when 20-year-old Ben Shelton faces three-time U.S. Open champ Novak Djokovic. It's the men's semifinals beginning at 3 Eastern today on ESPN. And then tomorrow, it's the women's final at 4 Eastern, also on ESPN. Will Reeve, ABC News, Queens, New York. Right, football so coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. There's a little tennis and there's a whole lot of football. Cowboys and Giants coming up Sunday night, 7-20 kickoff. But before that, it's the Texans. And the Ravens, C.J. Stroud starts his career in the NFL Sunday afternoon at noon. And with the official start of the NFL season last night, that means football fans is going to be a little busy over the next oh, 12, 15, 20 weeks. In fact, one husband has already told his wife he won't be available for work on game days, and he did it through a resignation letter. Now his wife is scoring with her comeback, as CNN's Jeannie Most tells us. This guy is one of you think these are hard knocks? <laughs> Actually, this is a hard knock when your husband hands you a letter and asks you to read it out loud. However, I must with remiss inform you that I am putting in my two weeks notice. The NFL season was about to come to pass. And Callie Wilson's husband, Dan, couldn't pass on this joke. I will no longer be available for work on Sundays, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., Monday evenings, nor Thursday evenings due to conflicting commitments. Genius, priceless, hilarious, posted football widows and football fans alike. But the Salt Lake City father of two wasn't done, informing his wife that she was infusing IV antibiotics for an infection. I'll also be available every Saturday. Kelly chuckled her way through the reading, evidently got a kick out of it. As one poster commented, at least you will have Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Dan informed Callie that the schedule would be in effect till February, March. Thank you for Callie got offers. So is the position available? And advice, girl, hire a temp. Instead, she returned his resignation. I'm sorry, he can't quit. We're short staffed. <laughs> she whistled that letter. <laughs> Dead. Jeannie Mos, CNN, <laughs> New York. She didn't waste any time either. Here you go. No, nope, can't quit. Sorry. Two kids. Have a, good, have a good time. Figure it out. Hey, a very happy birthday to SA Live today. The show celebrating ninth anniversary. So let's go to Mike and Fiona at Market Square where the party is about to get started. I'm sure y'all have already kicked things off a little bit. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes, that's right. We are this many. Yes, this indeed. This many old. <laughs> we have got a beautiful, beautiful cake uh, in the shape of a TV made by our dear friend Dario Ariana. And you got more treats for us right I there? I have some treats. We're celebrating. Ooh, so yes. what a better way to celebrate. Oh, all right. And then this these are not ice cream. These are cake pops. Okay. Cake a different pop. style. Okay. But before you take a bite into it, just 
Let's break the bottle. We're party. Oh, wow. There you go. Oh, my it's God. It's a surprise inside. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, well, that's a cute way to even do maybe gender reveal. Yeah, yeah. it's a new trending that you're going to learn right now. Stay tuned to see how we're going to recreate this. <laughs> Great way to make a mess on the floor as well. And if you want to do some uh, simple decorating, stuff you paint your frost this year, yes. I love this idea. So take your old uh, cupcake liners, I mean, you have like random ones, and why not make a fun garland out of it on some yarn and a plastic needle, and you do something what really fun. fun. Yeah, it's super easy. All right, birthdays. We want yes. to see your birthday pictures. Yes, September, of course, is a popular month, so give a shout out to the September birthdays in your life. Scan that QR code. And Jen is not celebrating a birthday. She We are in the Wheel of Death. This is one of many attractions at the Cardin International Circus presents the all-new Shrine Circus. Lucky, we're also going to meet a gentle giant. Can you give me a hint? Yes, we are going to meet a real-life pachyderm. Okay, if you know what that is. Yeah. All right, okay, we are going to, are we going to do this? Let's do it. All right, ready? Oh, one, oh. two. Oh, we'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> 